Justerini and Brooks has tried out a number of different uh, expressions beyond J and B Rare in order to expand into different markets. And most of these expressions came about after Grand Metropolitan bought the brand in 1972. These other whiskeys include um, Jet 12 year old, which I reviewed in episode 19. Uh, there's a 15 year old, a 20 year old, Royal Ages, Royal Ages 15 year old, negative six degrees Celsius and Urban Honey. Now, aside from Urban Honey, all of these other expressions are gone, with just J&B Rare left standing. It's a very strong brand. It is Diageo's second best-selling Scotch brand behind only Johnny Walker, and it is often uh, one of the top five best-selling Scotch blends in the world. Uh, it is made up of between 40 to 44 different whiskeys, with the main malt elements being Knock and Doe, Othrusk, and Glen Spey throughout the years. Uh, today, I'm going to be reviewing three J&B rares from three different time periods. We've got the 1970s, the 1980s, and today. First off is a quart bottle of J&B rare. The alcohol is measured in proof, which sets this before 1990. The liquid volume is measured in quarts, which sets this before 1980. The tax stamp on the bottle shows U.S. internal revenue. That notation was used between 1962 and 1977. So now we've got about a 15 year range there, 1962 to 1977. In JMB Rare print ads, all the way up until 1971, the top of the label had Justerini uh, listed in a curved font. This does not have that. Uh, the earliest this bottle can be from is 1972 which coincidentally or not is when uh, Grand Metropolitan bought the J&B Rare brand. So that sets this bottle between 1972 and 1977. The mini bottle also has its alcohol measured in proof, which sets it before 1990, but its liquid volume is listed in milliliters, which sets it after 1980. The mini bottle also does not have a tax stamp, which means it's from after 1985. So this places this mini somewhere between 1986 and 1989. This 200 milliliter bottle was purchased at the liquor store last week. It's uh, bottling code is a little rubbed off, but it looks like it's actually from 2016. At the top of the J&B Rare website. It says made for mixing. So intentionally or not, the company is already telling us this wasn't made to be sipped neatly or even on the rocks. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to try each of these neatly, but I'm also going to make highballs out of each of these. 1970s J&B Rare. Nineteen eighties JB Rare. And the current JB Rare. Okay, I'm gonna put the highballs to the side for a moment to let them settle in. J&B Rare from the 1970s. It's light and it's floral. There's some cinnamon, some cardamom, baked pear, and some orange peel. It also reads a little bit sugary, like cotton candy or rock candy. 1980s, J&B. Feels like there's a little more candy going on in it than the 1970s version. Minty candy, like candy canes. There's a little bit of the floral element, but I think there's a grassy note that's a little bit bigger, a little bolder. Maybe a little bit of bubble gum, a little bit of apple peel. Current, Jane B. Rare. This noses a lot 
like Johnny Walker Red today. It's alcoholic. It's raw. Um, one gets notes of like over-oaked American Chardonnay. Maybe some buttery oatmeal. And definitely some old sweaty socks. 1970s J&B. Cheers. It has more of an alcoholic bite than I expected. It also has a lot of baking spice notes. Cloves and nutmeg and cinnamon, cardamom, pears, a little bit of baked apples, brown sugar, and something kind of malty. The finish has, again, a little bit of that alcoholic nip to it, but it reads a little peppery. 1980s J&B, Solange. While it has the 1970s type uh, baking spices, there's a whole lot of fresh ginger, watermelon rind, some really tart notes. It does still have this papery, cardboardy note that isn't leaving. The finish is mostly heat and spice. Current day J&B. <clears throat> L'chaim. I'm searching for some positive words here. It's a little bit medicinal. It also is definitely Johnny Walker Red's cousin. It's a bit chemical. It just tastes like a, 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 an aggressively oaky, young grain whiskey. Plastic bottle American blended whiskey. It's like sugar coated cardboard. There's plenty of heat in the finish. It's cloying. Um, it's very difficult to process because there's a lot of very strange chemical bitterness in it. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move into the highballs. I'm feeling a little more optimistic about these. J and B from the 1970s. Oh, awesome. This is almost like ginger ale, though I didn't actually put any ginger ale in it. I just put, you know, club soda and, and, and two different kinds of bitters in it. It's a little floral, it's a little fruity. It also has this nice punch of those baking spices. This is great. I would, I would drink this all summer. 1980s J and B. It's also very refreshing. It doesn't have this one's baking spice note to give it any sort of angles. It's very nice. It's just like another one of these hot summer day highballs. It just drinks so easy. Current day, J&B, made for mixing. It's much more palatable this way. Uh, it's lost that weird oakiness. It does feel more put together in this highball. 1970s J&B has the most character. It's very approachable when neat. Will probably be a little more exciting, I think, to a lot of um, rye, American rye drinkers because of its spiciness, because of its baking spices. Uh, it also keeps those elements in a highball. The 1980s J&B uh, has a really good nose when neat. It has some elements that are a little less comfortable and I don't mean like sophisticated or complicated or complex. I mean a little unsettling um, when neat, but man, it makes a great, great highball. Uh, so I would recommend it in that format. Modern day JB Rare, I do not recommend drinking it neatly, perhaps on the rocks. It's a little better, but it works as a highball. It said it was made for mixing, so probably in cocktails. It serves its purpose. Um, but I would lean a little heavier on the mixers with the current day version than the older versions. I will say uh, my daughters are waiting at the door right now, so I'm going to cut this short. If you're dusty hunting for J&Bs or if you have a dusty J&B, just know it's not going to blow your mind with complexity, but it's going to be a nice crisp thing for the summer. So open it up, pour it uh, either neat if it's an older one or work on some um, cocktails or highballs and it'll be a really nice drink for this summer and summers to come.